Hi, Ray Hayden here, and this is a video about uh, a program that I found for Windows, and it's Windows 7, and it's called Open Broadcaster. Now, I already knew about the thing. By the way, here's this. This is the operating screen. I'm going to miniaturize this and get it out of the way. I did a Google search for Open Broadcaster. A couple things came up, one of which was Open Broadcaster software. I'm just going to link forward to it because I already went to the website and downloaded the software because guess what? I'm using it right now. It's Open Broadcast software. It says uh, OBS. 0.65, so it's a beta, and it was released March 6, 2015. So this, you know, this stuff's brand new. Okay, so uh, it works under Windows 7 and 8, and uh, I think it's an excellent thing. They also have a Linux one they say coming soon. Um, I just like this software; it works very, very well. It's very intuitive um, because I've been using uh, Record My Desktop. Now I want to open up that um, window again. Now you see this background moving, uh, and and if you look in the center here, if you follow my mouse, you look in the center. You'll see my mouse is moving all over the place because it's like an infinite window. Watch me move this uh, thing. All the windows are moving inside that one window. It's kind of like one of those infinite mirrors if you have a mirror behind you kind of thing. It's a very in an interesting thing. Kind of throws me off a little bit, but that's okay. Um, now, the reason why I'm using this software is because I'm going to miniaturize both of these windows for a second. And this is my computer. It's an Asus uh, Ultrabook, but it's actually the uh, Asus Zenbook. All right, so let me open up these two windows again here. And... Now put this window, oops, <laughs> I'll put it back on top. Probably it's going to take a window, there we go. And um, I want to go through some settings. I downloaded, of course, uh, I downloaded the Windows 7 and 8, uh, which is, you know, because I'm using Windows 7 on this computer. I, I'm not, I don't plan on updating this computer, uh, this operating system, because I purchased this computer for a specific purpose, and it's the, pretty much the only reason I use it for. And But I would like to get more use out of it, and if I can use it, for this kind of purpose, that would be excellent. Now, what I want to get into are some of the settings. Uh, the first things first, in order to be able to record a desktop, the very first thing I had to do is, is under sources here, there's a check mark in the window that says monitor capture. That was blank when I first got the software. So it was kind of interesting for me to start this up. The first thing you have to do is right click this area and add some video that you want to capture. And the monitor capture is what I had to add. So I'm going to click off of that. I don't really, it's already there. I don't need to add it again. And then the other thing I did is I had to go through the settings. Now, um, I didn't have to change anything in any of these tabs over here on the left. I, I had to change nothing uh, except for one or two little things. So let me go through this. English is a language. Don't need to change anything there. It automatically picked that up. That was the default setting. All of these settings here were default under audio encoding down here. Um, I would have something to say about that. Uh, but it's AAC, 128 uh, bit rate is okay with me, and it is 48 uh, kilohertz, so I didn't really care about that. Uh, the broadcast settings, I did change this from live stream to file output only because I'm recording this. I don't want to live stream it. I don't have any streaming software on this computer, and that I know of, I don't even have access to any uh, streaming accounts you know, anywhere. You know, I, I can't even think of anything that would, would stream it to if I wanted to. Uh, video. Um, there's nothing I had to change here. This was all default information that it came with once I installed the software. The audio is where I had to change something. I had to ch uh, something else. I had to change this microphone up here. It says Sure. It says microphone Sure Digital. Um, there's a default one you can use, and the Realtek one that's listed here is the built-in microphone to my computer, which is horrible. <laughs> so you know, but the, the digital microphone from from uh, Sure is that I'm using a professional microphone that I use for business anyway. Unfortunately, it's omnidirectional, so you'll hear other noises in the room with me, uh, more so than if I was using a, um, a cardioid microphone, which would you know, just focus in one direction of where I am. This one here is omnidirectional, picks up everything. I can you know, be behind the microphone on the other side, and you'll still hear everything just as equally as well, or as bad, as the case may be. Um, I'm using my microphone, it's hooked up to a microphone mixer, uh, a Shure, it's a Shure microphone hooked up to a Shure mixer, which is plugged into the Shure X2U um, USB device. You know, the X2U, of course, is XLR to USB. So it actually takes, I take my professional equipment, I hook it up to this one little device, uh, which is like the shaft of a handheld microphone kind of thing. It's that, that's the, you know, what it kind of looks like. You can Google it, Shure X, the number two, and then U. So X2U from Shure. S H U R E, and you can see what this device is. And I did a video, uh, kind of, kind of touching on it, uh, also on my YouTube channel, and you can look at that as well. Now, um, that takes this microphone and puts it in to where it can be uh, attached to my uh, ZenBook, my Asus ZenBook, 
uh, running Windows 7. And the reason why that's so vitally important, and I'm sorry for the delay in explaining all that, is because there's no other microphone input for my computer. <laughs> so I needed to actually use this device to get audio in there at all. And uh, what I had to do when I use this device, whether for Linux or for this Windows computer, I have to um, uh, reboot the computer. So I have to start it up with this device attached, then it will just show up and it just works. It just works and it's a fantastic device, I love it. And if Shore wanted to send me a big bag of money, that's fine. Under audio up here, under the hotkeys, it, it says push to talk and it's unchecked. And um, what I really like this, it has these push to talk buttons. So if I wanted to have it like a permanent mute and then just push a button when I wanted to talk, I believe that's the way it would work. I'm not 100% sure, um, but it's a cool thing. I really like that. And I would see where that would be important under broadcast. If you're doing a live broadcast, maybe you don't want everything in the background to be heard and broadcast live. Uh, maybe you only want uh, some commentary, you know, during the uh, during your live show to actually get out there. Or maybe you want the option to kill the audio rapidly. Um, so that's an idea there. But I didn't touch anything obviously on this screen. Under advanced, um, in all honesty, I didn't even read any of this. I just said, you know what? Whatever the software picked was going to be fine with me. Uh, same thing on the quick sync encoder you know uh, here's uh, something about the microphone noise gate um, i understand the concept and uh, if you don't it explains it right here so um, i don't need to touch any of that because i operate my audio separately through my microphone mixer uh, the scene switcher i really have no clue what that's for so i imagine that's for if i'm broadcasting or god knows what so i have no idea about that but if you want to look at it you can go through all the information and by looking at some of these pages here it looks like they actually you know describe things where you need some help and finding out about something the program itself will tell you about it so i'm going to say okay to get right out of this window but i wanted to show you that um other than right clicking this and adding my my monitor capture oh you can also select a window um so that's kind of a neat thing there's there's very and there's a game capture if you want to demonstrate a video game or a section of a video game there's all kinds of neat things going on with that so so i highly recommend it for that it's a new program but more importantly it's open source so it's free there's no cost in this thing you can make a donation to the um to the website up here um then if i make use of this thing for any length of time or get any good use out of it then i will probably absolutely make a donation to their site uh, because it seems to be so far an excellent program. So I just want to share that with you and um, that's going to pretty much end my introduction to the Open Broadcaster software, which is, uh, I want to tell you the website, it's obsproject.com. So it's O is in Oscar, B is in Bravo, uh, S is in Sierra, project.com. OBS for Open Broadcaster Software project.com. So with that, it's been Ray Hayden. Uh, take care and be well.